Hi, James. It's great to have you back here. Thank you very much. I'm thrilled to have you back on the show. Great, it's nice. Such a lovely lady. Thank you. You're back in town because you're performing now. Yes. Um, and last time I saw you, your new album wasn't released yet, but now it is. It is. I'm real. It's doing fantastic in the States. It's like probably the biggest record I've had maybe in 15 years. I don't know. Are you sure? I'm saying it's, it's, it's I'm real. It's fantastic. You know, it's um, it's skyrocketed to the top of the charts in yeah. the states, and it's, it'll probably be number one you know, in a couple of weeks. I'm sure. Now, that album was produced with Full Fort, and it's great. Well, yeah, yes. great production team. Yes. But I was curious to know. I mean, you've been a hell of a producer for years, and you've produced not only yourself but other bands and other people. Why now do you feel a need for other people to produce you? I think this is just the record companies. Um, they don't really understand what, what's going on. But Full Force did a fantastic job. So that's the bottom line. Uh, and I really respect that, you know. They got a, and I worked with them very good. And I, they knew me when they were in school. And uh, then I met their father and, and, and uh, the mother. And I thought it was fantastic. I thought it was great, you know. They respect me, the Godfather, and they can say things about me that I probably wouldn't say myself. I, yeah, there was some bits you didn't even want to sing. That's when, right. I'm How did really, you know that? I know everything. <laughs> I'm real. You weren't too keen about saying nah. I'm the real deal. Well, I didn't want to say uh, there's nobody out there good enough to take the things I had, you know. And uh, all you copycats get off my tip. I'm James Brown with the foes and taking a lip. You know, a lot of things I don't want to say. I'm not a harsh person, and when I get to that point, then I, you know, I'd rather not be that way. You know? Right, but on, on the remix of the... It came yeah, out of yeah, yeah, it sounds like a tribute to you, a great yeah, tribute yeah, to yeah, you. Um, yeah. <laughs> but on, on the first single, the remix of I'm Real, at the end there's a little bit of an interview where he says, it sounds like what I was doing 10 years ago and what people will be doing tomorrow. That's right. That's right. But you have, I think, something like 800 albums that you've never released? Yeah, well, we've got a lot of songs I haven't released. Huh? Uh, and in this particular album is one of the releases I cut a while back called It's Money, It's Your Money. All right. And that's in there. It's fantastic. You know, it shows that we have some dynamic things, but I'm, I'm very pleased with Full Force because the rap is, you know, it's kind of a tribute like it to me. Yeah, it All is. All the things I've done, and I like to hear the old sound. Sounds good. But don't you think now, now that they're all re-releasing all your old material and stuff you did for other people, including the JBs, do you think now it's the proper time to release all those tracks you're so, so, hiding in your closet? <laughs> I think you must have been talking to Polygram. No, they, no, no, no. They no. knew I have those tracks, you know. No, you told me way back yeah. when I interviewed you way yeah, back. Yeah, I, I got a lot of dynamite tracks. I'm going to probably release um, one album and let them see how fantastic stuff. It's cut so tight, you know. It's the, much tighter than the stuff I did in there. Because last time you told me that you didn't want to release these tracks because they were too advanced and people yeah, wouldn't understand right. them. That's right, yeah. But maybe I mean, now yeah. people are more prepared for your sound. Um, I hope so. I mean, you know, it's one thing I think when you see our, our stage show, you see it's a lot more uh, aggressive than we are on the record because you can only be so aggressive on the record, you know. I mean, you got to kind of take your time and teach them on the record. But in person, seeing is believing, you know. Better that way. And you enjoyed the show, right? Yeah, I loved great. it. Okay. I loved it. We'll be doing it again tonight, so hopefully if you come by, it'll be great. Yo! Yo! You know, also, the JBs are playing here next month. The J I don't know. Who's that? The JVs, your, your band, is playing all together. Maceo, uh, Bobby Bird, uh, oh, that's, Reeves. No. Uh, the, the press is talking about it here. Well, like, I, I, I think, I think uh, um, Bobby Bird and Vicky is. And then um, they may be bringing some of my old, some of my... Yeah, Lynn Collins. <laughs> yeah, Lynn Collins, that's yeah. right, yeah. That's right. So, but it's, it has nothing to do with you? No. How, what do you feel about it? It's kind of weird. It's your band. Well, uh, they can't use it. If they're using the name of JB's, then they will probably get in trouble. Huh. They can't say JB's. 
but they can say Lynn Collins and uh, they can say uh, Dickie Anderson, Bobby Bird, uh, Marvin Whitney. Mm -hmm. They can say that. And I think Mason and Spider should come back with him too. Talking about the JBs, you were actually the first artist to ever give credit to musicians. Yes. What? How did you? Why did you decide to do that? Well, the fact musicians were nobody's before. Well, because they. Uh, well, I think everybody's somebody, but I think the fact that they work so very hard, I think it should be acknowledged. You know, you know, like you know, uh, my manager, my hairstylist, my wardrobe mistress. I, I try to give everybody a shot. You know? Because one day I didn't have that shot. So if you think of everybody as human beings, I thank God for bless you. You've actually done a lot for uh, the music industry. You were also one of the first ones to do uh, live recordings with live your own album. money. That's right. Because nobody was ready to pay when, for a live album. Prepared. I mean, I have um, a couple of live albums. Now. We've just left the uh, behind the iron curtain. We cut a live album. The Live at the Apollo. That was the first one. Live right? at the Apollo was my first. But we just left them behind the Iron Curtain uh, in East Germany. And uh, we um, cut a live album and we made a cut a video. Um, we left, we left a, a special on television, you know. Great. Television special. And uh, then we have a few other things that uh, that's in the can. We'll bring that one back. Wow. Sounds interesting. It is. It is a lot. It's really interesting because it's nice to cut the stuff and kind of look at the people and say, well, it's time now, and bring it out to them and see the reactions. And I've been very fortunate because most time it's, it's been great. You had, your, your career is quite amazing. I mean, you started sing, singing gospel. Gospel, yeah. And, and then you turned it into like a review. Yeah, I went into a review, but I, then I, see, soul music is, is like, uh, and punk is, it's like double music together, it's gospel and jazz together, right. which makes funk and soul. So, you know, I was able to convert that and make it uh, one sound, you know. But you're you're somehow the creator of funk. Yes. And what do you feel about artists like, especially Prince? I mean, he's really influenced by. I him. admire. Him. Let him, you know, let him do their thing. Yeah. And that's what I feel. And if they feel it's a copy of me, and people accept it, let them let them, let them do it. I mean, you're influencing like half of the business these days. That's it's right. all done after what you created. Yes, I and mean, I look on on um, eighty percent of what I see. You know, it's basically James Bond. It is. It makes me feel good. Did you ever see it again that that man that once told you in jail that you should be singing? No. Um, uh, Cause he, he's the one who convinced you yeah. to do it as a job. Yes. Yeah. Cause I never thought of it, you know, but I, I think hunger had a lot to do with it, too. <laughs> right. Know, wanting to have something, I didn't have anything. Come from a very poor family, and, and the music world was very, uh, very easy for me, and it was more uh, there. I mean, I had a chance to play professional baseball when I was very good at that. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I was very good at that. But I think singing is the best because I'm still around. How, how is, because Georgia is where you come from, is a sort of quite racist state. How is they, do they treat you now? Well, uh, same experience has really been all over the world. Because uh, uh, I've seen it in every part of the world. In the early days, but you know, it's uh, not quite as bad now. No? You know? But is I that think, I think it's more greed now than anything else everywhere, but I mean, you know, it's, it's basically the same because I've had a lot of problems with the leases, you know, and um, that's kind of a drag, but it's happened in New York too, so. But they took lots of things away from you. You had radio stations Oh, yeah, and oh, yeah, yeah, they, they can't stand you to have that kind of um, progress. And uh, it's slowly reoccurring unless the states can get themselves together. But like, not just states, all parts of the world is happening. And I think people are letting themselves drift back to things that's gonna get them in trouble because nobody's gonna accept it. I mean, I'm not gonna accept it. No. And I'm not gonna march and pick it. If somebody takes advantage of me, I'm gonna retaliate. <laughs> I mean, I don't, know, I don't know in another way. I don't intend to, you know? But uh, I've gotta protect myself, you know? But it's, it's quite interesting, really, because on one side, Georgia has been 
a bit nasty to you if I can say so. On the other side, the, the American government was asking you to stop riots when, especially when Martin Luther King. I did that because I don't want to see people get hurt. I think I would do that anywhere in the country. I was in Hitler one time and kids got up excited and I stopped them there. So kids and I mean people like me all over and I don't preach violence and I don't preach um, vengeance but uh, by the same token I, I can understand what it's about. But it's, it's funny because you're the only artist that can stop a riot wherever it is, <laughs> whatever it's about. Yeah, I wish I, I, wish I weren't the only one though. I wish I went the wrong one. I like, you know, I let everybody have that same influence at the beginning. You know? But I guess, you know, my thing has been I try to express myself in loving people and being colorblind throughout my life, you know. I don't see that, you know, I just don't see no line. I just see people. Right. That's the only way. Now, earlier you mentioned that you had this project of doing a video on your next project. But oh. I thought you said you didn't like videos because people were doing one thing on the image and then singing something that had nothing to do with it. I didn't like, no, I don't like a lot of videos I see now. Unless the video is about what you're doing. It's about the song and do it. But, I, you know, talk, do a video about a song and, and be doing factual work and I don't, I, I don't, I, don't, I can't catch that. Right, because you did, in fact, the video uh, when you did um, James Brown and Africa Bombarda, the energy yes. track. And also we did um, Gravity. Yeah. And, and Living uh, in America. We Living in America. But they express what we were about. Right, like know? performance. <laughs> you know, but they express, I mean, they told the story of what we were singing about, you know. Right. Living in America showed the different jobs. Gravity showed um, the uh, mid-dancing and all the different moves and how I can defy Gravity by dancing. And then uh, Unity showed that Africa Bambard and myself were together and trying to stop the nuclear war right. concept, you know, and we had quite a success. It was very, um, yeah, it was, it was a great song. And it did a lot, you know, it had the people thinking. You know. The first rap song that you actually did was the Rap Attack in 81. No, Let the Brother Rap. Let the Brother Rap, right. And then Rap Attack was somehow an answer to what Curtis Mayfield, what um, the Sugar Hill you know, Gang yes. and Curtis oh, Paul were doing. Oh yeah, they were doing that, yeah. What did you first think of rap when it happened in the street scenes in, in New York? Well, you know, I like rap, yeah, but I don't really love it today because uh, I feel they got too much away from melody. That's right. There's no songs, you know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of talking. Right. It's a groove, you know, but it still should have some songs. Some that, melody. Yeah, that's why actually Pull Force is one of the only ones doing, making, being conscious about having a melody. Yes, yes, yeah. And it's on them. Yeah. I like Pull Force. So do I. You like them, huh? Yeah. Right on, sis. <laughs> I hope they'll, they'll come over here, you know. Um, I was talking to an agent that does the booking. And he wanted them to come over and open and up. And play with you? Yes. Oh, wanted. well, so, that's great. Well, there's... He's talking about it, so hopefully when, when I come back next year it'll happen. If it, but he'll probably come before I come back now. Right, because last night I was I've surprised. been coming back too often, you know, I think I'll, I think I'll stay away about a couple of years before I come back. I know he don't want to hear it, but I, I'm going to stay away for a couple of years. I don't want to be so, I don't want to see him so much, you know. You'll preserve yourself. Well I, well, I can play all over the world, you know. I'd rather really let somebody else come back to you for a while. Because I've been coming back for a year, you know. Yeah, but it's good to have you around. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. But I'm going to give it to him this, next, next year. I'm going to come back next, the year after next. 